We have another problem here, uh, a 16.25 kVA, 0.8 power factor lagging, 650 load, 650 volt load is to be energized from a 690 volt through uh, an ohm 0.8 plus J 0.64 ohm feeder. So the question here is what is the expected voltage at the load? Uh, since we are not given a graphic here, you know, like a circuit drawing, it's best if you could draw it to the best of your ability, to your best of your, you know, uh, imagination, I guess. So we have a source. Uh, it's a 690. So, you know, just kind of draw it. So we have a 690 here. Um, let's use a different color. Uh, we have 0.8 feeder, so you know, let's just represent it here. 0.8 plus J sixty four, and we have a load. So this load is actually uh, 1625 kVA, so that's S is equal to 1625. So this is kind of what I do at first when I'm given a problem. I identify my known and my unknowns. And I'm kind of visual, I'm a visual person, so I try to see it for what it is. That way it's easier for me to solve it. So we have a power factor here, 0.8, we have voltage, 650, and then the bus voltage here is 690, um, well, yeah, 690 at the bus, 690 volt. So let me use a different color. So the question here is asking for your voltage here at the load. So as you can tell, we have some impedances across. So we have some resistance drop across the board here and you have a voltage. So using your um, KVL rule, I guess, I don't know if you want to call that KVL or not, but if you want to find a voltage over here and you have a source voltage, you got a voltage drop before you get there. So you know just by looking at this that your voltage at the load would be somewhere near 690 because if your voltage leave the source by the time you get to the load you'll have some voltage drop because you have some impedance here. Right? And you also don't forget also that the imp you have the impedance at the load as well. So just by looking at it if it was a multiple choice and I have like a I'm given like four choices of V equal 250, V equal 240, or V equal 500, blah, blah, blah. And then another V of 6 something, I'm not even going to solve the problem. I'm going to say the V is equal to 6 something. Because I'm not going to get a lot of voltage drop across here. And this is just my theoretical calculation. So I'm going to eliminate probably, you know, the 200s and the 300 voltage um, answers. And then I'm just going to be left with something closer to 690 here. So you kind of see the logic here, right? All right, so let's solve it anyway. So you want to solve it to get the right answer. But just to kind of get you the guys to and get girls to think about the logic behind certain problems. So you can clearly see what you're doing and, and that you're not just doing math for the sake of it, but you're actually understanding what's going on. So we have voltage at the source um, 690. So we need to find the current flowing through here, right? Uh, flowing through uh, this impedance here in order to, and then the total impedances, because you have impedance here, the feeder, and then um, you have the impedance of the load as well, right? So we gotta find the total um, the impedance of the load first. But before we do that, let's find the current flowing 
uh, through this line over here. So I is equal to, in this case, we are given S. So let's say S over V. So 625 kVA divided your voltage by your voltage of 650 here. So this, when you do the math, don't forget the K here. When you do the math, you have 25A amps. But we have a power factor, so don't forget about the power factor, okay? So the Z at the load, in this case, would be, it's gonna be, um, It's going to be 650 that's your voltage you know V equals IR so your R will be V over I right that's what we're doing here so it's going to be 25 with your power factor now when I was taking the exam I memorized pretty much the power factor because I've done so many problems so I know that 0.8 power factor is um, 36 uh, 36.8 I believe but let's just be safe here so the theta would be cosine minus 1 of 0.8 so just do the math so when you solve so many problems with 0 0.8 0 0.6 you kind of start memorizing them so here uh, we have a lagging power factor so you have a minus sign minus angle 36.8 0.9 so this is your Z load though Z load this gives me uh, when I do the math I have 26 with an angle of 36 of course 0.9 ohms oops So we have I, we have Z load as well. So we have Z load, we have Z at the, um, on the line here. So we can get the voltage across here. So that'll be the voltage drop, okay? So I feel like using a different color. Never mind. Um, so so V at the load will then be six ninety minus the voltage drop, and this voltage drop is equal to the current V equals IR times uh, Z feeder plus Z load. So this is equal to 690 minus I is, what was I? I was um, 25. with a power factor of minus lagging. That's my I. And then uh, my voltage is going back up here, 0 0.8064. 0 plus the Z load, uh, which we already found to be 26.36.9. And you can put this directly to your calculator, uh, but you can convert this in R plus JX.
Sounds, it sounds so. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Yeah. All right. So when you do the math here, you end up with voltage of six sixty three point eight. So remember how I was telling you earlier that it shouldn't be far from the voltage of the source because you you're gonna have some voltage drop across. Um, remember if you have like distributed load how your voltage would leave at the station at like you know whatever 120 125 but towards the end of the circuit you will see like 117 116 volt so that's kind of you know the kind of concept over here so you got a source you got a load you got some impedance in between some resistance in between so you got a voltage drop um, so that's kind of how you, you you visualize it and you kind of put that in your head in order to solve the problem. So what we did was we um, got the current flowing using, because um, it's this is sort of like a series as well, so the current flowing here is the same thing as here. So we use this information at the load to get the current with the power factor, don't forget about that. So once we get the I, uh, we f uh, solve for the impedance of the load we got the impedance of the load we add that with the feeder to get the total impedances we get the total impedance we multiply by the current to get the voltage drop and we subtract the voltage of the source that's how we did it um, I feel like I went long way here I'm not sure if I explained it properly but I hope you guys understand I think I should have named this like a V1 and I could have probably done this better but um, hopefully you, you understand and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Thank you.